Today we're going to demonstrate how to replace the heating element in one of our hot air stations. Uh, I chose the CSI 825A++ mainly because it's uh, been a good product for us. We, it's been around for quite a number of years. So there's probably a few, quite a few of them out there that may or may not need a heating element replaced at this time. Now any hot air station will eventually need its heating element replaced because it is a uh, hot wire heater. Um, these usually last quite a few years before you need them, of course, depending on how many uh, hours per day you use them. Uh, a couple of the things to, we need to make sure of before we start out is we need to make sure that the station we're working on is unplugged, completely disconnected from the main power. Uh, we need to make sure that we're grounded with a uh, good grounding strap so we don't um, do any damage to the electronics inside the unit. We also need to make sure we have the tools that we need in hand, on hand before we start. Um, I'm going to need a hot air um, heat gun to uh, melt the shrink tube that I need to insulate some of the wires after we're done. Uh, a good pair of needle nose pliers, a pair of wire cutters, uh, mainly to cut the tie wrap that's inside. I need an X-Acto knife to help me remove the heat shrink tubing that's uh, on some of the connections. And then a couple of screwdrivers. Uh, I may or may not need the small one, I like to have it in hand just in case. I also need a soldering iron um, because there's a small amount of solder applied to a couple of connections on there. So a little bit of solder, solder wick in case I need to wick off some of the solder. I'll need a small tie wrap and a couple of small pieces of heat shrink tube again to insulate some of the connections that I'll be replacing. The heating element itself is a model 10094. Now, our, um, each station has its own heating element. This heating element is good for a couple of our stations, so be sure you make sure you've got the correct heating element on hand before you try to uh, go ahead and begin this replacement procedure. The first thing we do is notice that there's three screws on the inside of the uh, hot air wand, so these have to be removed to expose the connections, so I'm going to go ahead and do that first. Okay, I got the three screws removed. Now I can grab a hold of the handle itself with one hand and with the other hand try to force the tube through. And again, you see that exposes the connections inside. Next step is to remove this metal shield uh, because kind of it'll be in our way and it uh, has a cover over anyway, so we'll have to remove it. Now notice there's a connection here. Uh, it's a wire that grounds the metal shield to the chassis ground in the unit. It's denoted by the yellow green wire, which is the uh, standard industry standard color for a grounded wire. Uh, it's got a crimped connection. I can just remove it, remove the, the metal shield there. That exposes the heating element, and then we can take a look at the new one and make sure that it's the right one, first of all. And we can tell this by looking at the connections. Notice that there is the white connector and the other side we have a red and a yellow wire. I need to cut, cut this uh, tie wrap that's on the connector to hold it in place because I'm going to have to remove it. And I'm also going to have to remove the shrink tube that's covering these connections for the yellow and the red wire. So I'll use my X-Acto knife to carefully slit this shrink tube. Again, I don't want to cut through any of the insulation, so I want to just put a little slit in it so it helps me remove it easily. Now, since it's all metal behind it, it's a fairly straightforward procedure. Okay, 
Give me one second to get a hold of it. It should come right off, and it did. Now this one came right out. Most of the time, it's not going to come out that easy. Discard that, we're going to replace it. Now, as I said, the uh, red wire connection came off pretty easy, but the yellow one's not. And the reason is they put a very small amount of solder to hold them together to make sure that electrical connection does not get disconnected and also to uh, allow for any expansion, contraction of these connections as the uh, wand gets hot because the hot air is blowing through this entire assembly the whole time it's in operation. So for that I need my soldering iron to be able to remove these connections but before I do that I'm going to go ahead and release this locking white plastic connector. To do this is just a locking mechanism. I lift it up and try to pull it out separating it from the housing that way the whole unit will come out when I'm ready to uh, when I get these desoldered. I'll now go ahead and get my soldering iron and I'm using the uh, Circuit Specialist Model 3 DLF station because it does have certain presets and I found that 400 degrees works well for this particular operation. So what I do is, uh, as we can see from the replacement element, I have these two male connectors on the heating element. I've got two female connections on the wires that come out of the uh, station and I have to try to separate those. So I'm going to go ahead and grab one end with my pliers and heat up the other end. So like I said, that one came right out. The yellow one is soldered in there, so I need to heat it up, heat up this joint a little bit until it loosens up, and there it goes. Again, it doesn't take much heat or very much time with the solder in it, because all I'm doing is releasing just a real small amount of solder that's on those connections. At this point now, I can remove the old element and discard it and I can go ahead and reinsert the new element. Before I do that though I'm going to go ahead and put a couple of uh, pieces of shrink tube um, on the new element so that when I go to put it back together I'll be able to insulate those connections. Now this uh, amount of shrink tube is I need to use the minimal amount necessary just to connect those uh, insulate those connections so I'm going to cut them down to a length, it's probably just a little over an inch, that will cover all the metal. Okay, so now I get the new heating element and I go ahead and insert it back into the uh, housing there. So I'll go ahead and make the uh, connection, but whether, I don't, no, don't necessarily need to lock it in just yet to get these things made. So again, make sure you got the uh, colors right. So in this case I have the red going to the red and the yellow going to the black-white. So there's the red. I insert the uh, male and male pin into this female housing, and then I do the same thing with the other one. Here, my needle nose pliers may come in handy to make that connection. So I insert them in as far as I can. Sometimes you may need to clean off some of the excess solder that was uh, left over from the previous operation. In this case, it looks like I'm going to be, able, I'm going to be okay without doing that. So again, I'm going to insert them in as far as I can go. Now I'll go ahead and add just a little, very small amount of solder just to keep them from coming loose on me during operation. Okay. 
Okay, just a very small amount. And now, hopefully I can go ahead and pull the shrink tube over the, the joints, cover it up. There we go. At this point I'll go ahead and get my heat gun out, <coughs> melt that shrink tube a little. Okay, now pretty much the unit's ready to uh, be reassembled. Notice I went ahead and locked this locking connector back in place. So elements in there are very tight. Uh, I know I have good connections there. <clears throat> the one thing that I still need to do is replace the um, tie wrap. Now whether it's necessary, I don't know if it's really necessary, but we'll go ahead and replace it since it was there to begin with. That kind of holds that locking connector in place. It, it's going to hold itself in place anyway, but I'll go ahead and replace this since it was there to begin with. Cut off the excess. Okay, so now I need to insert the wire uh, socket here and make the connection with the wire pin that's coming out. Once I do that, should, I'll go ahead and make the connection there. Now this one comes in and out much easier because it has no solder on it because there's no electricity flowing through it, it's just a ground for the ESD safe feature of the unit. What it does is it keeps this metal shield grounded so that the hot air is blowing over and if you actually touch it to the board it is grounded you won't create any ESD events. So once I get in there I go ahead and shove it back down as far as I can go. Uh, make sure all my connections are solid, they look good. Go ahead and put the uh, plastic housing back around it. Try to line up as best I can the holes. Shove it all the way down. And looks pretty good there. I'll go ahead and reinstall the screws. Okay, now I've got the uh, screws all started, I'll go ahead and continue to tighten them down. Let's do a quick inspection of it, it looks good. So we're ready to rock and roll.